Now let's talk about certain powers that are actually very mysterious that people cannot understand today. There are two powers that people and scientists today are still baffled with, and they can never understand what it is. You know what they are? So this is very interesting. The first one is light. Scientists still today cannot understand light, how it works. Even the great Albert Einstein, who's considered one of the uh, smartest intellectuals, when he gave his theory of relativity, that the speed of light is constant. That's how they can discover more scientific facts in their universe, they will say. Secular scientists claim they can uh, measure, they can discover more things about the workings of the universe through the speed of light. So there are, one force is light. They cannot understand that. And if you believe in that book, then you understand why. The Bible says, God is light, and in him is no darkness. You know why you can't understand that? Because you can't understand God completely. What's the second power that people still have trouble understanding? You ready for this? It is gravity, scientists call it. Secular scientists call this gravity. Now, there are people out there who've done uh, more research and they don't believe in gravity, whereas the secular science, science world, they still retain this idea of gravity. But concerning gravity, let's get back to the point right here. Gravity, they, a lot of scientists are still baffled about how gravity works. All they can do is see the outward workings and then give it that name gravity. That's all they can do. But gravity is a, another mysterious factor and power that they can't understand. Go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. And then go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. <laughs> you know why it's a mystery? Because Satan, that's him. He's the force. There is some kind of force that is out there, but it's still a mystery, and they cannot completely understand its workings. God is light, and Satan, you must understand, is the force. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. And then we will read verse 38. But in his estate shall he honor the who? God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not. Uh, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. See, this is a foreign, this is not the true God of the Bible. This is an evil God. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 2, Ephesians 2, 2. It's out there. This force is out there within our earth, within our world and the universe, but it can't be explained. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the who, power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Scientists realize this. There are, now waters is right here, earth is that right here, fire is up there. But if you want two specific powers that is all over the universe, you ready for this? What are two powers you can think of that is all around the universe? It's this one and this one, light and gravity. Why is that? Because there are two powers, folks, that are working throughout all of creation. Both of them want your soul. Both of them know it's not just the physical realm. There's something out there. Woo! <laughs> Ain't that something? And here's another thing right here. Concerning uh, gravity, look at our world, how the devil is deceiving the world concerning gravity. For one, you got the New Agers. What did they say? They give the idea about the force. And now it's spread throughout our popular culture in Star Wars. May the force be with you. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That is not Jesus Christ. That is a demonic spirit spirit right there. Didn't you know that I've actually seen some Christian stores and organizations that give out Christian tracts of Star Wars 
and they have may the force be with you and they said that force is Jesus Christ folks who's the God of forces you read in the Bible who is he that's Satan that is not Jesus Christ another thing right here concerning the force you notice that when uh, in Star Wars how they get that power of the force they move things see they're able to move objects that's the force in them that's all demonic that's why there are some occultic practices where they do what strange levitation that's occultic that's of the devil uh, let's not let's kind of get off now a little bit from the spiritual realm and let's enter the physical realm how did the devil use this for the physical realm scientists teach we were all created out of what gravity you know what science is now to them it's a religion science now is something gravity is their god gravity is something that they believe created all created all of us throughout the universe you want me to go more than that here's another thing satan is not just gravity he is also another thing right here he is what darkness really pastor yeah the bible says that he is the prince of darkness didn't you know that how about that? The Bible mentioned that Satan is the prince of darkness. Scientists, what do they teach? What created us? Dark matter. You see what the devil's doing? See, Satan, what he's doing is that he's entering. He's not just deceiving the spiritual realm, folks. He's deceiving the physical realm. See what Satan's doing? But God, here's one thing, he is light. Ah, let's get, now this is something even better. You ready for this? You think these two were something? I'm going to show you something better than that. God is light, but look at John 1 again. He is also what? There's one power you never thought of. It's word. You know why? Word is something that carries the idea and a belief. Word can change people's souls. Didn't you know that? If you don't believe me, don't underestimate the power of words with Adolf Hitler. He damned a lot of souls in the end after that. Don't deceive the power of science. Even science couldn't be, science would not be able to teach you without words. They have to write the words down to communicate to you, to give you the belief and the idea. God can't minister to save Christians without his what? <laughs> Look at John 1. John 1. His word. It has power. You think you're going to carry this more carefully now after this? After church is over, you're going to carry this more carefully now? You're going to probably cherish this more carefully now? This is a power. John 1.1. 1, 1. We read that before, Pastor. You just didn't read it hard enough. All right, let's read it. In the beginning was the who? Word. And the word was with God, and the word was what? God. God is not just light. He is the what as well. He is word. Because we believe what created everything. If God is light, that's how he created everything, right? Through the light of his power. But also, how did he create all of us? Through his what? Aha. Let there be light. And there was light. Oh, wow. That's God. How did you get, how did your spiritual realm get alive in? You were dead in trespasses and sins. But you became alive, revived, created anew, born again by what? The word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing. You are saved by faith and hearing by the what? Word of God. Woo! Glory to God. How about that? How about that? See, this is something here. The, now, in the Bible, I'm going to say this. So I'll probably be the first person to say this. I could be wrong, so I'm going to admit this fact. I could be wrong, but this is what I strongly believe. Out of all the powers throughout our universe, we can see Satan and God using these powers here and there. Fire, God can use it. The devil can also use fire as well. He is dragon. He is Leviathan that blows out fire, the Bible says. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. He can use that. The Bible also mentions that God, uh, that the waters, the Lord can use it as well. God spoke out of a burning bush. Uh, Satan, he swims in the waters as Leviathan, dragon that is in the sea. 
Both God and the devil can walk among the earth. Jesus Christ walked on the earth. The devil, as he said at the book of Job, walking to and fro, up and down on the earth. That's what he said. So it can go. But I never saw God, I never saw darkness becoming part of God or force becoming part of God. I never saw that. Neither have I seen Satan being a part of light or a part of the word. But Satan, if he is going to get into the word and light, what is he going to do? He is going to mimic. He wants to be God, right? Thus, he has his own words. His own words. Occults, why is it that they always chant? Because as several occultists stated, the reason why we chant is because there are powers and words. But whose power of the word trumps above the power of occults? You ever notice who it was? It is the name of Jesus Christ. It is the word of God. So Satan's word is nothing. He just wants to imitate God. Satan, is he light? Or the Bible says he is transformed into an angel of light. That's why the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, chapter 13, it said, uh, don't let it, uh, chapter 11, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says, don't let it deceive you if the Satan's ministers can transform into ministers of light. Satan transform into an angel of light. See, he's not the true light. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. He's not the true light. He is not the true word. God cannot be a part of this. Neither can Satan ever be a part of that. All he can do is mimic it. But you notice the attempts of Satan trying to mimic it? Through the efforts of Tesla and Edison, you notice the, how our world went downhill as soon as what? Let's talk about another thing right here. Technology, right? Technology. The Bible says, I beheld Lucifer as what? Lightning from heaven. Electricity. When Thomas Alva Edison and Tesla and then other scientists, they were doing their experiments and their work, they discovered what they called what? Light. Is that true, genuine light though, or is that man-made light? It's man-made light. Man-made light. Satan want, and then, I don't know if you knew this, but Thomas Alva Edison, he was part of the Theosophist uh, Occult Society. Uh, he even had his name written on one of their papers as well. And then Tesla, he had a lot, of, uh, a lot of his experiment and work was connected with a lot of dark elites. I don't know if you knew that. So the thing is right here, this is not a coincidence right here. As soon as Satan discovered his own light, and the Bible says, I beheld Lucifer as, as uh, Satan as lightning from heaven. So Satan is, uh, is connected with electricity. Ephesians 2, did it, what did it say Ephesians 2? Prince of the what? Power of the air. In the air, what is the power? It is electricity as well as force. There's some kind of magnetism force. So you see, Satan, he has a connection with this. That's why, how was technology born? Technology through the combination of electricity and force. Through the combination of Satan's own kind of light. As well as the force, you create high and mighty technology. What is the God of the secular world today? What is every single person, and I mean saved, lost, every religion, what is everyone using, relying on today? This is the God of this age, everybody. This is it, technology. This was, and that's why Satan, you see a lot of satanic works within technology. What happened with technology? Oh, that's why people are messing up around in the internet. What happened with technology? That's why you're going to have 666 over here one day. What happened with technology? We got spiritually colder. What happened with technology? It created a, a television mindset. And because of that television mindset, it's affecting people's normal everyday life. That's what secular scholars even admit too. There's a problem with watching television. 
social media. Why is there conspiracy theories concerning about social media with Facebook and Google, YouTube, and all that kind of stuff? Why are there weird stuff coming out? Technology. Technology. It was born from evil. You got to understand. Now, I want you to understand this, okay? This does not mean that uh, I'm not saying right here that we can't use technology for the glory of God. We can use technology for the glory of God. You can use any element in our world for the glory of God. Didn't you know God even used the darkness for his glory? The Bible, uh, when God approached to Moses on Mount Sinai, there was darkness all around him. But God is not of that darkness. Because when Moses passed through the darkness, his face shone. He entered the light of God. God is light. See? So here, here's something you got to understand. We can use these elements for the glory of God. But what you've got to understand is that predominantly, predominantly what you can see is that there was a lot of evil used within that. There's a lot of evil used within that. This is very interesting. That's why technology, Satan is going to use this to try to battle God. Technology makes everything omnipotent. See, you get more power and more power, develop more stronger nuclear warfare, etc. Technology is omnipresent. You have Google, you have the satellites, you have people recording phone calls. It's everywhere. You can be everywhere. Technology is omniscient because you got Google. Type down a specific information, boom, right there on the spot. Satan will use technology to try to conquer God. Those are the intermediate powers. Never underestimate that. But what you're going to notice right here is that God, when uh, concerning the power of the air, we see electricity. One factor God uses through the air is wind. Go to John 3. John 3. We see Satan right here, predominantly using electricity, and God predominantly using wind. Wind. Go to John chapter 3. Notice that the Bible says in verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the who? Spirit. Spirit is likened to wind. Satan is likened to electricity, whereas God is likened to wind right here. So here's uh, amazing factors concerning the wind. That's why wherever it blows, we go freely. The Holy Spirit is wind. It has power. We go freely by the Spirit, and we move everywhere. But Satan, he tries to deaden it with all this electricity that we feel in our body through technology. It's unhealthy when you're nearby the computer screen a long time. Don't you know that? Why don't you instead be filled with the wind of the Holy Spirit? Why is it when a breath of fresh air goes into you, you feel more rejuvenated in the morning? This deadens you. This one livens you. Now think about this. Concerning about these factors, concerning about darkness, Light, because of light, God's light and God's power, that's why you can enter the spiritual realm. But if there was no power within the spiritual realm and all these elements died out, you know what it's going to retreat back to? When it has no life, we got light, uh, life from the light and life from the wind. But when you completely deaden life, do you know what you retreat back into? Darkness. That's why, what was God's judgment at Genesis 1? To get rid of life there. Darkness. What happens with this universe if uh, it doesn't continue? If the sun doesn't continue, etc.? We all retreat to what? Darkness. We all go back into the dark. What happens to your human life if you're no longer living? It turns dark for you. But you're able to live every day in your life because you have your own wind in you. You have your own spirit. Every man has his own spirit. But a lot of people, they don't have the Holy Spirit within them, which you need.